And WWE brought back Brock Lesnar, who had a stare down with Roman Reigns after Roman Reigns beat John Cena at SummerSlam. And what this means, I don't know. Well, we know that we, we know that Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns is happening for 2020. Well, I mean, we know that, but I mean, the, here's the thing with this. When you told me that the idea was that this match originally would not take place until 2023, here in 2021, I mean, listen, I see what they're doing with Roman Reigns, and if I were attempting to put this together, my idea would be, yes, you bring back Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, you don't know what Paul Heyman's going to do, is he going to turn on Brock Lesnar, is he going to turn on Roman Reigns, you obviously can't manage there's a there's a great story here okay absolutely and uh and you get Natural through that story. yes and then after that you've got the rock he that's who's left you've got brock lesnar and you've got the rock if you're doing the story that like nobody in WWE, which is a story by the well, way well, ho- nobody hopefully. in the company can compare to roman reigns well, and well, so hopefully. he's now dealing with these two outsiders brock lesnar and the rock well ho- hopefully they make some people in the but next this is my point years. dave this is my point this should be like the storyline from now until WrestleMania, where he goes through Lesnar in the fall, and he goes through the Rock at WrestleMania, and somewhere in there, you build up somebody who's going to be the person that beats Roman Reigns, and he's your new handpicked guy for uh, the summer of 2022. But the idea that Lesnar is going to be the WrestleMania main event in 2023? Well, I doubt that. Like, what now. are we going to do? Well, or, okay, let's happen. say that he does this year and then Rock does the year after. Yeah. Uh, like, what are we doing in the meantime? What are we doing? Which is, we're going to do exactly what we did this year. He's going to run through Finn Balor and he's going to run through all these guys. We still have Finn Balor to run through. But, you know, he's going to run through Drew McIntyre and, and, you know, um, everybody else that they can find, you know, to get there. Um, there's always going to be guys. I mean, they, have, you know, I mean, look at the booking of Daniel Bryan and they still did another pay per view with him. Um, you know, like, they stacked, I realize they stacked, they, up, they stacked up Daniel Bryan and Edge and then, and then he wrestled both of them again. I realize they brought back CM Punk on AEW, but the, the two days before that, Chris Jericho submitted to MJF in the middle of the ring. And the Young Bucks are probably going to put over a new team in this cage match. It could end up being Lucha, uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, who's in his 20s. Darby Allin is the first main, again, main event with CM Punk. Everything that I see on that show is about building towards the future. Well, and yeah. these ideas here in WWE, I mean, they're cool ideas. Roman Reigns and Lesnar with Paul Heyman and everything like that. And The Rock and, coming and that, back. That for, match, and that, that match, that program should be done. I mean, sure, that's all cool and everything done. like that. But, like, we need to build for the future of this company. And Roman Reigns destroying everybody that's working week after week on this show... To, like, get him to a level where he has to face these outsiders leading into 2023? Well, not just Roman Reigns. Bobby Lashley's doing the same thing. This is not the direction. Well, they... And we haven't even talked about Becky Lynch coming back and beating Bianca Baylor in 25 seconds. Yeah, well... um, That also... I mean, obviously, that was not the planned idea. And, um, you know... It happened because Sasha Banks wasn't going to be ready, and they felt that they needed something um, to quell the audience. I mean, you could tell when Carmella came out, they weren't going to be happy, and it was probably a swerve. So they, you know, brought in Becky, which, again, was the right move to do under the circumstances. But whether they didn't trust the match or what, I don't know, because I did feel that, um, you know, it was... it. It was disrespectful to to Bianca not to lose because she had to lose in this situation, unfortunately. But it wasn't but even about did. disrespect, but it was about the babyface Becky Lynch coming back and saying, "Let's tear the house down tonight," and they did two moves. Yeah, well, um, I can't justify that past the point that they didn't, you know, for whatever reason, maybe maybe Becky's not ready, maybe whatever reason they didn't trust the match, um, and that's what they did, or you know. Um, But, yeah, I felt, um, you know, it was too Kofi Kingston-ish. And if we remember when they did that to Kofi Kingston, he fell to the middle right away. And, um, you know, I I was 
I don't know. I mean, at least in this case, I mean, Bianca is surely going to be getting a rematch, unlike Kofi Kingston. So I can't do a direct comparison. But the thing that was most amazing to me about the return of Becky Lynch. No, under, under any circumstances, shouldn't have lost in 26 seconds. No, of course there's, not. You should have done a match. No especially if there's you no promise way. to tear the house down, you've got to do a match. But yeah. the bigger thing to me, Dave, is we just watched the return of CM Punk. They did not advertise that CM Punk was going to be there, but they hinted it. They zoomed in on fans chanting CM Punk. I mean, everybody that was paying any attention knew that he was going to be there. And they opened the show, they hit his music, and you've never seen people so happy. Right. If you look at what they did with Becky Lynch, there was, was a there was a thing a few months ago where there were rumors that Becky Lynch was going to be back, and you actually had the fans chanting Becky Lynch's name at shows, and they didn't do anything. Yeah. And so this time here, like last this week, was a le- this was a, le- a late decision based. Yes, on- Dave. But you know what? Last week they knew that that Sasha Banks was not cleared. They've known they've known for eight days that Sasha okay. Banks wasn't going to be there. So you very easily could have said eight days ago that Sasha Banks is is out of SummerSlam due to you could say injury or whatever you want to say. Okay. And because of that, Bianca Belair is going to be a mystery facing partner. a mystery opponent, okay? Or you could just say Becky Lynch. Well, you. the point is, we learned that you can do what they did with CM Punk, and it works. You could advertise Becky Lynch, or you could essentially do what AEW did and let everybody know without tell saying it's be- so tell everyone, that tell it's everyone, Becky Lynch. Tell everyone it's Becky Lynch, and, and yeah. And, but, Instead, and get the, they and get the advertise Sasha for eight days. Knowing she wasn't... They be- literally and, 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 do a video package. Hold on. They do a... For those who didn't see the show, they did a video package for the match... Then they before, promoted it on, they promoted it all over the pre-show. They do the video package, then they come back and oh by the way, Sasha No, no, Banks no, isn't. hold on. They do a video package for the match. They bring Bianca down to the ring. Bianca's she's, in the ring in the after ring. the video package. She's about to wrestle and the ring announcer just says Sasha Banks has not been cleared to compete tonight. And as a result, Bianca Belair will be facing the most beautiful woman in WWE, and they hit Carmella's music, and the fans are furious, and the announcers are but trying that was to... Des- that was designed to be... I that realize way. that, but it's like, you advertise... I mean, it was the most... Bl- and, of course, then they bring out Becky, because, you know, whoa, we're going to make y'all happy now, even though we blatantly false advertise for eight days. They could have done this in a way where they did not false advertise. They could have done this in a way where they built anticipation throughout the show for this match. They would have gotten as big or bigger a reaction. You wouldn't have felt screwed. I was just like... I don't I don't know that people felt screwed because they got Becky Lynch. I mean, they should have because there's... there's Look, there's no excuse. There's no excuse to do the false advertising. Um, and also, there are people... You know, this was... This was the main event of day one of WrestleMania. They didn't. They, ne- they they held off the rematch for months. So this was the rematch that that Sasha Banks got after losing the championship, and they had a really good match. So people were expecting. I mean, people were expecting a four star match, or you know what I mean. Like like they were expecting this would be to be, you know, one of the two or three best matches on the show, and in and in in reality. They didn't get a match. Now, granted, that's not that big of a deal in the sense people go for, and they're trying to sell the idea of moments, and that is a big part of big shows is giving you moments, and we saw, you know, the people in the building, I think, were happy to see Becky Lynch. I think that there was obviously a letdown. Well, of course they were happy. That, my my point is, there were a million ways you could have done this better without screwing over the fans. Of course. There, well, look, look, there's, there's no justification for what they did because they false advertised they knew for a week they weren't going to be able to deliver the match the mentality is well we'll give them something better and as a moment they gave them something as a match they gave them nothing um so whatever you know if you come for matches um you got screwed if you come for um wwe made moments then hey you got becky's return you know which again they um, you know, they weren't going to do it. Like, look, when, when things happen that fall apart, the one thing is, is, okay, 
you you have to give booking leeway just like with the adam page thing you you have to it's it's not perfect the christian cage thing wasn't perfect they tried to make it as big as they could by having christian win the the match the first match and everything like that they're trying to book their way out of a bad situation okay you know you could argue it could have been eddie kingston it could have been whatever there's there's many guys that it could have been okay christian's the one they chose and that's the deal and also i think you know again some of that also is is that you know you're working with impact you're going to change the impact title obviously impact's going to have a say so 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 you've got so there's but the point is is when when something happens that throws you a curveball You've got to give like like again like an injury a week before a UFC championship match, and then the next guy who they do as a replacement is not really the top contender. It's just some guy that we get. It's just like shit happens, and sometimes that's what you got to do. You make the best of a bad situation, and that's with Becky. They made you know better than the best of a bad situation in in a way. They you know they gave away something that they were probably planning for November. Um, or October or whatever, whenever it was going to be, probably November. Um, so, you know, that's the reason and that's fine. But like I said, when you know someone's not going to be there, um, there, there's, you know, and they did this with Roman Reigns and, uh, and, uh, Bill Goldberg, you know, at, at WrestleMania, this, this, um, not this, uh, this, uh, 2020 WrestleMania, but, um, you know, I mean, there, there's, there's no excuse for this. There's no justification. There's no nothing. It is, False advertising when you know someone's not going to be there and you still advertise them blatantly, um, you know, especially on Friday night. It's like Sasha's not even in the building. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so it's like they they know, you know, and they've, they've known all along. So it's just amazing uh, because I know that that people will hear this and argue that about how cool it is to have a surprise and everything like that. Well, it was cool. Pop it was got. cool. Yeah. But you know what? We know now at, because of Friday that, in fact, one of the biggest pops in the history of wrestling was a, quote, surprise that everybody knew about, but it was not advertised. Like, you cannot convince me that Becky would not have gotten as big a reaction if you would have just been truthful with the fans and said that Sasha wasn't made, going to be there and no there's going to be a surprise well, there's, opponent there's, for Bianca. Look, look, look it's, it's all fine and there's no excuse for the false advertising. The fact that they put Becky in there is fine. There's, it's, it's great. It's great. They changed their plans to give you something better because that's the hand you're dealt. That's great. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, the argument as far as, um, you know, like... Whatever the argument, we could we, you could have done a, a different match, a better match, an actual match. Yeah, very valid. But um, you know they had their reasons. You know whatever the reason is, they had their reasons for the short match. Um, and um, you know I don't know. Maybe they didn't want. They were afraid that uh, Bianca gets booed. Maybe maybe I don't know what their rationales, but obviously they were afraid to do that match. Um, so th there you go. That's what happened. But, um, you know, like they, they did the best thing, uh, in a bad situation, except they had no right to advertise the other match all the way through. I mean, that's just, that's just blatant false advertising. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.